And there's always this awkward pause when I'm not sure if it's working yet. And I'm watching. <laughs> Says it's watching. live on my side. <laughs> does it? It does. Yeah. And now it's actually yeah. recording. So I'm going to have to get this out of there later. Waiting for YouTube to refresh. And. And. I'm going to attempt to watch the chat room at the same time. Which is always fun. <laughs> Very impressed. Now. Okay, it's not doing it yet. It says we've been on for 40 seconds. Come on, YouTube. Where do we go? Awkward singing always gets live events to start. Come oh, on. definitely. Or awkward dancing. Yeah. We're gonna party. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening here? Uh, two watching now. Okay, it started, but it didn't start. It started. Okay. Sorry to the two people watching us for <laughs> you were just watching us what waiting and watching the screen. That was awkward. Hi, good evening from <laughs> well, good evening from where I am. My name is Stephanie Fuccio and I am coming to you from Tirana, Albania, which is a small um, a small city in a small country next to Italy and just north of Greece. North is this way. Yeah. Um, this is, the, <laughs> I am the producer, host, and editor of the Geopets Podcasting Podcast, which is part of the uh, Geopets Podcast Network. I will remember the name of my own. Yes, there are people watching. Oh, I'll remember the name of my own network. I will, I will. This is the second panel in the Global Women Podcast Editors Panels, which I clearly should have named something shorter. <laughs> but there you have it. <laughs> um, every Tuesday in April, we are having panels like this, where we are talking to w different women podcast editors from around the world. Um, I'll introduce the panelists in just a second, but I wanted to give you a little bit of background of what we're doing and why we're here today. Um, this all started back in the Stone Ages. No, this all started <laughs> like last year when I was uh, starting to get active in a few po uh, women podcast editor groups and it started to gain momentum. And then I started to discover other groups and I ended up writing an article about these groups. And actually, I interviewed Mary about one of those articles. And um, yay. And um, yeah, and the conversations just kept going and I wanted a different platform for them to, to continue to happen on. So I figured I had a podcast on podcasting. Why not do some some things over there? And so here we are. As for me, uh, I am a podcaster, clearly. Um, I have been podcasting for about four years. Uh, it's turned one podcast turned into many, blah, blah, blah. I have a lot of different parts of my podcasting world, including but not limited to uh, my own podcast, being an editor, having a podcast editing newsletter, which is available every Thursday. You can sign up at stephfuccio.com. And if I can point in the right direction, this is so hard to do backwards, but that's where you can, that's where you can sign up for the newsletter <laughs> <sighs> and, and so much more, but that's, that's about me. Now let's excitedly, let's go around and find out more about our wonderful panelists. So let's go clockwise. <laughs> Mary, <laughs> can you please introduce yourself? <laughs> yeah. Something about yourself and where you're coming from. Hello, thank you for having me, Steph, for putting this all together. Yay. Uh, yes, my name is Mary Chan. I am in Victoria, BC, Canada, which is all the way on the West Coast, just outside of Vancouver, where I grew up. And with podcasting, I have a long history of audio editing. Um, outside of podcasting, I started in radio as a commercial producer, making commercials, voicing them, putting together the sound effects and music. And I did that for 20 years before they finally downsized me and decided everything had to be done out of the big city instead. So I kind of wallowed in my sadness for a couple of days <laughs> and then realized I listened to a lot of podcasts. And maybe this is a thing that I could help edit them and help people create them and went down the rabbit hole of Google and realized this is a thing. I can make this a thing. And so since 2018, I founded Organized Sound Productions, my podcast production and consulting company. 
Fantastic. Susie. Thank you. Hi, I'm Susie Buttress <laughs> and I'm calling, well, calling in. <laughs> I'm hearing <laughs> from London, England. Well, just south of, uh, south of London, England, but that general area. Um, I have been producing a podcast called the Casual Birder Podcast, which is all about wild birds since November 2017. And as a result of producing the podcast, I learned about podcast editing, which I didn't know was a thing before, and now I do. Um, I have gone through trials and tribulations with my editing, but grown to love it. There are some really surprising things that I never knew about that give me great joy when I'm editing. There are some things that don't give me joy at all, but that's only because I'm on a learning <laughs> curve and <laughs> I know that I will get there eventually, <laughs> but that's me. Great. And Casey. Hi, I'm Casey. I am in North Seattle, Washington in the United States. So just south of Mary yeah. uh, on the other side of the border. And um, I started working with a audio engineer back in 2000, which is where I learned all about podcasts and how amazing they were. Although at the time they were really annoying to download and get onto my iPod. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone's shaking their head. <laughs> um, and it was a lot easier at that time to travel and do all of my traveling, uh, working in the restaurant industry. Although with the pandemic, I've now found it a lot easier to work in podcasting. So here I am doing podcast editing. So, yeah. Fantastic. All right. So, um, Let's start off with talking about, Susie mentioned some of those trials and tribulations, but we'll do it this way. What do you super enjoy doing with podcast editing and what do you hate? So maybe one of each. Are we going in the same order? Let's go counterclockwise, which oh. I can, I'm going to stop pointing because this is clearly yeah. not working. <laughs> <laughs> and feel free to I'm on whichever one you feel that you need to talk about right now, either the one you love or the one you're kind of struggling with. Casey, can you start us off? Oh my gosh, the one I really love um, is, I don't even know. <laughs> uh, you know, I looked at this question and I'm like, uh, I, I like chopping things up. I like content editing because it's just really easy to mm -hmm. just go in and be like, slice, 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 get rid of this, get rid of that. Mm -hmm. um, what's hard for me sometimes is getting everything levels because mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, people will be like really, really close to the mic and then they'll like back off of it. And so, you know, that part for me is hard. Mm -hmm. so. Susie? Susie. Well, Yes, content editing for me. I didn't realize that you could edit sound in that way. Um, so when I discovered that I could slice things together and take things apart and um, make things tighter, <laughs> I'm not very good at um, doing a, a solo show, which is my, my show is a solo show, but I have interviews as well. But I'm not very good at just speaking off the cuff. I'm fine if I can talk to people, but not on my own. So if I don't script it, then I absolutely need to edit the content. But being able to move things around a little bit and sometimes with my interviews, some things that the guests will say are, would make sense a little bit earlier on. So I never change what they've said. I might just mm -hmm. enhance it by taking out some ums and ahs. But occasionally I'll put content um, with an earlier piece of content, something like that. And I just find that really amazing. It's almost like editing a document. You can just think you know once you get familiar with the with the sound waves and you you know, and you obviously can hear what the section is um being able to move that around i just find that it's almost magical it's just like wow and when i learned about zooming in and seeing where the sound wave was <laughs> so that i could actually join without there being a horrible sudden cut or anything so i just feel like i'm a wizard um the things that i struggle with are i I am learning that my ears hear different things to the mic. So when I, because I want to include a lot of birdsong um, in my show, when I'm listening to that birdsong, 
I hear the bird song. I filter out the traffic and the kids in the garden and whatever, and I can hear the bird song. And it's been a real shock to me to hear the mic doesn't filter that out. Um, and so I come back and I, I play my, my, my bird song and I'm like, well, where did all that traffic come from? I didn't hear it in the field. Um, mm -hmm. and so there's been a, a big learning curve in trying to handle environmental noise that I don't want to produce. Um, mm -hmm. so that's where my biggest struggles come from understanding how to produce a show with the sound that I want with the limited equipment that I've got. I don't have a fantastic thousand dollar parabolic mic or whatever i'm working with a podcaster's equipment um set up so um you know i have a few extra bits up my sleeve but i don't have like a true sound recordist's setup um so that's where my main struggles come from so i love the content editing editing and i i, I like it when i can produce sound that that sounds like the bird was as i mm -hmm. as my head heard it but it's just that doesn't happen very often. So I think I might be more critical of it than my listeners, I hope. Mm -hmm. But that's my struggle. I'm so glad that you said that because I just had an interview that I could not leave the echo in the guest's recording afterwards. I, I was so into the conversation that even from the beginning before we started and we were just quickly chatting, I completely blocked that out. Like my editor hat was off in another room somewhere. And in post, I was just like, what did I just do? What did I just do? I just get so focused on what's happening that I don't, it's, it's hard to balance those two as the host and the editor at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, and I find that's why it's actually good to have an editor because mm -hmm. then you can, when you have your own podcast, then you can just put the hat of host on and not have mm -hmm. to worry as much about the other stuff involved. Good point. Good point. Yeah. So, Mary, how about you? What I love is listening to the cadence and melody of people's voices. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, every everyone's voice has their own melody. And if you think about it in terms of like a song, when people speak, they have a certain melody and cadence to it. So it's kind of like a beat. And sometimes I'll move my hand like this, like a conductor, because you can see the way people speak mm -hmm. is like a melody. And then when I get to create an intro or an outro or a trailer and include that some music along with it, I get to combine those two melodies of the person's voice and the music to create that magic that Susie was talking about as well. So mm -hmm. I really love that. That's kind of the stuff I miss a lot from my radio days. And so when I do get to produce an intro and outro or trailer or even create a more audio pleasing podcast where it's not just a straight interview, if I can create some more sound design into that, I love finding the right music and mm -hmm. to create the right tone and the environment and feeling for a particular episode. And so then the stuff that I struggle more with is the sound processing side. So I just find it more tedious, like to do the de-clicks and the de-verb. Mm -hmm. And like you said, in, for podcasting, not everybody is recording in the most soundproof rooms. And mm -hmm. so that's the stuff I struggle with because again, coming from the radio background, I'm just so used to everything is recorded perfectly. And then I just get to play with the melodies and the music and the sound effects mm -hmm. versus now it's the first step of, okay, let's clean up the audio first and try and make it as clean as possible before we dive deeper into the edit, the speech editing aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with the negative one first for me. I agree with Casey. Leveling kicks my butt. I don't care how many videos I watch. I don't care how many, you know, fill in the blank of reading and testing and playing and what have you. I end up just not crying, but not being happy with the leveling. I think that's why I, I, I'm leaning towards Hindenburg right now is because that auto leveling I love. It's not the exact sound I'm looking for, but it's much closer than I was getting trying it in any other way. Um, <clears throat> as far as the thing I love, it's the shaping, even, I mean, I do all interviews, but there's still a story arc in there and I love moving around, 
uh, the different parts of it to kind of build that up. Like I'll ask questions as they come, but ha ha ha, that doesn't mean that's how the interview is going to end up in, when it's done. It's like, no, 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 we have to, we have to include that later. We'll put this first. We, this is the interesting bit that people need before they kind of start vacuuming and don't hear anymore. Like, you know, that's, that's good. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a, there's an arc to it. There's a, there's a reveal to it. And, uh, and I, I love doing that part a lot. I am liking playing with different DAWs and different sound effects, but I'm not super great at it yet. And I think if I ever get there, I'll have that as a like part two. But right now it's just like experiment. No, that sounds terrible. Let's not use that in the final one. <laughs> Um, okay, so there was a question about how much time it takes you to ugh, to completely do a 30-minute raw edit. Huh. <laughs> Who wants to volunteer to do this one first? <laughs> 30 minutes raw edit. How long does it take you? I'll start. And okay. just like any good... <laughs> Answer, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> I was just having this conversation the other day with another editor, and it really does depend because mm -hmm. what are you editing? Is it an interview style show? And then secondly, are you going to do a lot of editing? So I have different clients that have different stylistic approaches. Some people want to make sure that all the crutch words and filler words are gone out of there. And then I have other clients who are like, no, I just need a couple pieces here and there and then smooth out like the coughs and the restarts and stuff. And then I also have other clients who really want that full sound design aspect. So a 30 minute episode can really range anywhere from 30 minutes to five hours, depending on what they want. And also who uh, who is the guest? If it's an interview style show, some people are just more. Uh, they're natural speakers. They do that for a living. That's what they do to promote their business mm -hmm. or what have you. And then there's other podcasts where they want to feature voices that are usually not in mainstream media. And so those voices tend to be a little bit more choosy in the words they want to say. And so there's mm -hmm. more thinking pauses and things like that, which you have to do more editing with. So it depends. <laughs> have you ever done an episode, a 30 minute episode in 30 minutes? Yeah, because some, my, I have this one particular client. She likes everything the way it is. She doesn't want any content editing done. She just wants me to skim through it to do the restarts, the coughs, the dog barking, <laughs> put the intro, <laughs> outro, her ad. So it really, you know, I'm just skimming for two times the speed. So I'm not really listening to everything. She doesn't want me to. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. That's awesome. They're the sort of clients we want then, aren't they? I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But, you know, they, they, I charge accordingly. So if I know that I'm not going to be spending that much time, it's yeah. it's a lower rate. It's a different tier. So, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Casey, how about you? Yeah. It depends still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it really depends on content editing and everything else. You know, I mean, if you're – getting in there and like really getting nitpicky about it. You know, I want every little breath taken out. It's going to take me a little bit longer and, you know, then just mm -hmm. going in and, you know, like Mary said, just skimming it and, Oh, there's a plosive here and let's take that out. Cause I literally have a client who's just like, I just want the plosives taken out and I want mm -hmm. it to sound good overall. So Yeah. You know, I've uh, done a 10 minute episode in about 15 minutes and that's my best. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you're shaking your head, Susie, because <laughs> my answer is on the other extreme. But that, they're you saying know, so far. It was a single person episode. And so that was, I think that was pretty good. But, you know, interviews, mm -hmm. no, most of those go a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely on the longer side and I produce a couple of different types of episodes. So I have a solo scripted one. That's the simplest one to edit because I've already written, I'm scripted. So that's going to be like, as you said, Mary, the, the misstarts, the, you know, the coughs or whatever. That's easy mm -hmm. enough. Um, then I have my bird walks where I'm recording outside as well. So trying to bring 
all that sound together, the leveling, as you mentioned. Um, and I will often have, well, I, I do have like a an, an, uh, beginning and end to that as well. So that will be recorded in the studio, studio. And, um, <laughs> and then the rest will have been recorded outside. So then mm. there's quite a lot of listening to that to think about which bits do I want to keep in, which bits add to the ambience, which bits did I really want to have in there, but oh no, I spoke over it or I, I walked over it and now I've got to somehow try and lessen the sound of the walking and the rustling and, and all that. So that takes a lot longer. And with interviews, um, I find those actually the most difficult. They are really rewarding to do, but I can't... I find it really hard to listen through, even if I make notes, to listen through and know where I want that to go. So I can get a very broad overview of where I want it to go. But then I come back again from the beginning and I, I can't listen through at, at any faster speed than actual um, until I'm really near the end. So I, when I say really near the end, sort of one of the last passes of the interview. So I, I maybe go too deep. I may be pass over the interviews too often but I think it generally takes me I'll tell you what six hours wouldn't be unusual for me because of <laughs> listening through again if it's 30 minutes long and I've listened through to that at actual speed several times um, and thought more about what the arc is and where <laughs> I'm cutting and then you know and then doing all the little fiddly cuts uh, that I might want to do in terms of, you know, breaths or whatever. And I find that th although there's lots of automation that you can use, maybe I'm not so skilled with it yet, but I don't find it gives me the the sort of uh, finesse that I want. Very often I end up going back and doing things by hand or eye um, or ear, I should yes. say. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm definitely on the, you know, it's a, it's a joy to have done a solo episode that's a scripted one because that definitely will be quicker. But, you know, it's like a trial by sound, isn't it? When you've gone through all of that, mm. you feel that you've really bonded with your episode. <laughs> yes. I just hope that people enjoy <laughs> listening to them. <laughs> yeah, you've got a lot in there. So, you know, I'm not mm. surprised that it takes a lot of time because, you know, you have so many moving parts and pieces, mm. the ones that aren't uh, solo episodes. And I know exactly what you mean about the the plugins that we use for like deep breath and things like that they don't always work you know no, I'm glad to it, hear you say yeah that because I thought it was just my lack of experience <laughs> no <laughs> no they're not magic I mean it's great to have a magic yeah. wand but they're not and especially for the zoom type interviews zoom already compresses people's voices and audio and so the frequencies in a breath sounds very mm -hmm. different in a zoom call than a live mm -hmm. local recording and so those plugins won't actually pick up the breath because the frequency is all off from a regular breath mm -hmm. so i do i find with a lot of the zoom interviews that i do i do have to go in there and drop them and figure out all the levels for that manually <sighs> yeah yeah, I'm I'm somewhere in between. Um, but I've just got straight interviews with usually two people. Um, but somewhere around two hours if we're not counting show notes and all of those other things. <laughs> if we're not ta talking about right, we're only talking about editing. Yeah, yeah. editing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then, yeah, I'd say two hours is probably my max, but I do so many different passes. And I'm, I'm always experimenting with different workflows on to make it better, easier to put the my most my least liked task first, so that by the time I get to the end, it's more of a pleasant experience versus when I save the worst to last, then <laughs> I don't want to finish it ever. So yeah, and I've been playing with different things like the auto leveling in Hindenburg and the clipboard in Hindenburg. I love those two things. I've also been using Descript more, but I do it first and then I listen the full way through and do my content in it because if it takes out anything that makes it sound super weird, then I will massage that area. But I honestly find like hundreds, hundreds of ums, ahs and uhs that would bug me as a listener. So I'm continuing to use that for now. Um, but yeah, I would say about two hours is a, is a decent amount of time is, is an average amount of time that I spend on a half an hour. I will say uh, that I have yeah. just started tracking my time, um, for all the different elements of that. Mm -hmm. So it's been a bit of a shock to find out how much time I do spend. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but then, gosh, once it's out there, it's it's evergreen content, right? I mean, it's it's out into the world and it's this masterpiece. So, I mean, it's it's worth the time, isn't it? I hope so. I, one of the things that <laughs> one of the things that I really um, I'm really happy about is when I put an episode out and then a couple of hours later someone says that was really fantastic and I'm like, you oh. listen straight away. But, but I'm also thinking, <laughs> savor it. <laughs> Don't eat it all at once. It's like you spend all this time making this big meal and then people have just eaten it. It's like, no, no, you know, <laughs> listen in stages. <laughs> Don't just eat it all at once because now we're going to wait for the next one. <laughs> Though I've had some clients tell me that their listeners will actually listen to an episode multiple times. So there's always that too, Susie. Ah, yes. (laughs) They'll listen to the same one over again. I've done that with ones I listen to, so I'm sure people must. Mm -hmm. Very true, very true. So we're all pretty heavy on liking content editing. Um, What kinds of things do you consider when you content edit? And man, is that an open, open question. (laughs) So, uh, Casey, do you want to start us off? Um, Well, when I'm content editing, first, I like to go through and just do like the big bulk content editing and make sure everything just sounds like it flows, you know, like I like the conversation to flow nicely and to, Mm -hmm. you know, make sure everything just, it goes together and there's no lots of ums and ahs and you know just cut all of that stuff out and make sure it just sounds nice and then I'll go through it and you know dig a little bit deeper and get into the oh that you know that word doesn't really sound really perfect right there maybe I'll cut that out or I'll move that around or you know maybe I should move this piece over into this where you know this they're talking about this a little bit more over here. Mm-hmm. Maybe I should, you know, move this piece from the 15 minute mark up to the, you know, eight minute mark or, you know, something like that. But, you know, I, a lot of times I don't have to do that much content editing, but sometimes, you know, they'll circle back around and I'll be like, hey, you know what, maybe I should go ahead and do that. But, you know, just that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mary? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, Susie. I was just jumping in because <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> go, go. Um, no, what Casey said there about uh, about things circling back round. I mean, sometimes people will revisit things that they've already said, but say them in a slightly different way that mm-hmm. actually works better. But it wasn't really the answer to the question that I'd asked, or and so that that is quite creative in terms of I know that's what they said, so I've not changed their meaning, but I might have enhanced how they've said it by putting it in a different position um Mm -hmm. and sometimes yes you need to then find a word to make the transition that they've said but they didn't say in the Mm -hmm. way they said it there and i that that's another little bit of the magic that i I, you know i never knew about and i discovered for myself i didn't know (laughs) this could could be done and then when the first time that i did it i was like wow (laughs) this is amazing um so I, I think, I, I can't remember exactly what the word was, but I had someone who, um, as they were speaking, they just kind of slurred over a word really quickly, but it was quite a crucial word, but they're luckily they said it later on mm-hmm. and I was able to lift it from there and bring it back in and, and sort of massage it in and make their sentence more clear. And I was like really chuffed with myself because it was definitely their words and it was <laughs> their voice, be. but I just, <laughs> wow. but coming from a non-sound editing background, you know, all of this is was totally new to me when I started podcasting. Mm-hmm. I didn't, you know, I thought I'll get behind a mic, I'll say stuff and somehow magically it will go out there. Um, <laughs> I did not know all this other thing existed. So it's been real eye opener. But, mm-hmm. you know, I've, I've built up so many skills over time from from the experience that it's just, um, it's just wonderful. Steph, are you typing? I am. I want to type in the chat room to let everybody know. I'm so sorry. All right. So really have any questions. I'm just thinking I'm with my like... editor's head on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of us are hearing the typing. Oh no, we have to edit that out later. Exactly. <laughs> here. Sorry. Uh, um, I honestly, Susie, I I take my hat off to you on doing that because more often than not, I will remove words more than I will add words when it comes to situations like that. 
I'll, I'll take out part of what they have said to make it make sense more so than go search for the word and bring it back. So that I think that's amazing. Well, I only do it when it's like a crucial thing. I mean, I wouldn't make yeah. it work for myself, but when it's important, <laughs> it's really yeah. wonderful to be able to find that. Yeah, sure, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Because I find too with the content editing that I do is if you're going to take out large chunks, yeah, you do sometimes need to put in that filler word. The and so is a great connecting thought. So I will take an and so from somewhere else way down the line so that it doesn't Mm -hmm. come, um, they don't hear the same and so uh, Mm -hmm. back to back. And then I'll move that a little bit closer so that it could be like a pause and so pause into whatever we have just moved into where he needs to be speaking. And the other thing, that's also a little bit magical that I do sometimes is when in Zoom, so part of the content editing is when Zoom drops the audio off, then you're either you're missing some words or you're mm-hmm. missing part of a sound. Yeah. And the ones that I find get dropped off a lot are just at the ends of words. So like an F sound or an S sound, which mm-hmm. you can actually find somewhere else and just take that S sound and then put it back into where Zoom had dropped it off. So mm-hmm. that that stuff's kind of like the magical stuff that I like to do as well. Not all the time, but when it does happen, it's, it's great. You're like, Oh, I created that. The finish of the S. (laughs) Now people understand what, what they're saying. I tell you what, when I, I do all of these things, less so the adding of words, but I do all of these things. But the thing that I, that took me forever to start doing was taking out content. Now I take out false starts when they, somebody starts a sentence and it, it, goes nowhere and they start a different one, I take those out. I take out ums and ahs and, and pauses and all kinds of things that, that don't really keep the momentum going. But taking out chunks that aren't connected to what we're talking about was really hard for me to start doing. But I've started to get more focused on not just the, the rhythm of the conversation, but on keeping it on point as much as possible. I mean, certain tangents are adorable and we're not, never going to take those out. But there are certain things where I'm like, no, that just doesn't, it doesn't help. It doesn't liven things up. It doesn't like, it doesn't add anything. And so taking that out, I was always really conscious. Are they going to notice? Are they going to remember that they said that and it's not in there? And no, people are <laughs> not going to remember. remember. <laughs> but it, I think that's the longest thing. The thing that took me the longest to start massaging was, was taking those bits out. I was yeah. wondering about whether if those things had merit on their own, but didn't Mm -hmm. quite fit in the conversation, whether, are you organized enough? It's something that I've thought of doing, but I haven't Mm -hmm. yet done, um, to be organized enough to actually log those as being unused and a Mm -hmm. subject matter so that I could bring them together later in some other, I I just feel like there's lots of bits that I could be using that I haven't, I have to be very good at organizing. I do. I have an accidental network. So if it fits into any of our other topics, I actually have it in my consent form that if if we go off on a tangent, but it fits one of the other podcasts, do you mind if I use it over there? So I, I have kind of done mini like five or 10 minute episodes that are tangents and other podcasts that go over there. For some reason, books and coffee, those two podcasts seem to like ricochet off of each other a lot. <laughs> But yeah, but it, but if it doesn't fit into any of the topics, then I really struggle because I'm like, eh. I just it, sometimes people say things and they don't have to go out into the world. Oh. Yeah. I mean, there is that as well. That the, mm-hmm. Not so much censoring people, but if no. there's things that they that they say that actually I feel like perhaps it didn't really come out right or yeah, I, I understand why you wouldn't want to keep oh sorry I understand why you struggle to cut it because it's content that they've given you that they've spoken Mm -hmm. about it was your conversation but that is what comes back to being like the content editor of of thinking about no what's tight what Mm -hmm. what serves the listener Mm -hmm. and that was a perspective shift that I had to make as well because you've you've made this you want it to go out but then we all listen to podcasts, I'm sure. I mean, and so we have to think about what what would we want to be listening to. But the other thing too is that you know, like when I'm editing for like a client, my goal is to make not just the uh, client sound good, but their guests sound good as well. Mm-hmm. So you know, I'm trying to optimize both of them sounding the best that they possibly can. Mm-hmm. So I want to take out like 
that part where they're laughing that may not sound particularly good <laughs> or you know it, that part where they go off on a little tangent that might not make them sound the best for that particular podcast mm -hmm. so you know i don't mind chopping stuff out that's yeah especially like the inside jokes when you were talking about the laughing yeah. casey I'm like oh <laughs> so you know those are friends that host <laughs> got a friend for their interview and you're just gonna take that out it's funny i kind of get it but it's like i think that's an inside joke <laughs> that yeah yep definitely. So, yeah definitely. so with the content editing i always think about in the end how is the listener going to enjoy this mm -hmm. because it's about the listener even though mm -hmm. yes i'm working for a client it's not really about them it is always going to be about the listener so mm -hmm. when i choose which content to keep or not keep would be based on will the listener find this piece of content valuable and connected to the overall picture of the episode mm -hmm. yeah. yeah exactly exactly well speaking of a larger group of folks <laughs> That was my attempt at a transition. Um, <laughs> if we're looking, if we're thinking about the different podcast communities that we're in, what um, what are you doing, or what have you thought about doing to bring other women over to the dark side of podcast editing? Is it a dark side? It's not a dark side. I don't know. <laughs> What do you do to encourage other women to come over into podcast editing or to dive deeper into it once we know them there? Okay, I think I'll, just interacting. Oh, sorry, Susie. No, you go with it, Mary. <laughs> um, yeah, interacting with people. So finding those editor groups or if you're mm -hmm. in a podcasting group where they're talking about editing to speak your mind as well, because you have your own experience through editing, your whether it be your own show. It doesn't mean that if you're a podcast editor, you have to have clients and edit for other people. And everyone's got their mm -hmm. own experience that, you know, like I said, I have a whole radio background, but I'm still learning so much from you guys as well, because you have a different take on how to use um, a DAW or what plugins that you might use that I haven't heard of yet. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's all about asking the questions and then helping out at the same time of answering the questions of mm -hmm. people who are wondering because yeah we don't all we there, there are no stupid questions people are always like oh I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask the stupid question I'm like it's not a stupid question because you are wherever you are at in your editing experience yep. that's your problem that's your challenge right now okay let's help solve that um I was gonna say that I haven't actually brought people brought women into editing but I do talk about editing a lot and I found great value personally from being part of some of the women only editing groups um, for much the reason that Mary just said that I feel able to ask questions that um, I might think are stupid or I might think are really basic because I know that I'm coming, I, you know, a little bit of imposter syndrome because I feel I've only learned through my own podcast and mm -hmm. I don't have clients, so I'm not you know, a professional editor. So sometimes you sort of think, well, if I ask this question, is it a bit too basic? Like, is it going to be one of those questions that everyone mm -hmm. already knows the answer to? Um, and what I found in those groups um, is that they're, they are very professional, but helpful. So it's not like, um, it's not like they're uh, patronizing me, Oh, so, oh, go on, you're new. Yes, you're, you're just, you know, it's, there's none of that. It's like, no, well, we use this, we use that. And have you heard about this? And also by reading all the other threads, I've learned stuff that I didn't even know I needed to learn. So when you're new and you're, you know, you're, you're, you're working on maybe your own show and you've not really considered what goes into other shows, um, by reading the other threads and the questions that other people have, it's really, really valuable. But then I talk about that whenever I'm meeting with podcasters. So I, mm -hmm. I meet with podcasters of all types. Not everyone does editing. Not everyone thinks editing is, mm -hmm. a, is a thing. But, you know, but I just think by having that message out there and showing 
either enthusiasm or you know commiseration <laughs> i think that's important too just just mm -hmm. showing that we do edit and that there are lots of women out there who are editing and doing amazing jobs mm -hmm. yeah i think talking about it is probably just the key part of it you know i mean if you're not talking about hey you know this is what i do and this is you know look at this cool thing that you can do with your podcast that you know no one's going to know about it so if you're yeah um but you know when you're talking about bringing other people onto it you know if people are asking questions and are like how do i do this you know if you just start hey you know what there's this other great support group you know you can go check them out and mm -hmm. you know you kind of just not just to help bring them into it, but it kind of helps give them a little bit more support and finding other people that, hey, I may not have all the answers, but you know what? There's this great community out there mm -hmm. and somebody will have the answer to your question. Yeah, for sure. I mean, who does have the answer? That's the thing that, wow. I mean, really, really strikes me with podcasting is it just keeps the changes with podcasting and with podcast editing seems so rapid that who would ever know everything all the time. So it, it's kind of a relief to just kind of like tap into your network because and you know that somebody will know and you don't have to. Like that pressure of I have to be an expert is like not necessarily there because there's so much, so much mm -hmm. to know. Yeah. Yeah, but um, I think for me, it's similar to what you all were saying is, is talking about it, asking questions, uh, liking, high-fiving, cheering people on when they struggle because because the struggle parts are hard. The pain points are, are challenging when when your when your dog crashes, when you realize you've recorded something that is echoey beyond echo and you need help or something else happens and you're like, how do I fix this? And uh, yeah, just talking through it sometimes can really help. If not in that specific situation, the next time you're in that situation, you might know how to deal with it better. So what's, what's uh, this is sort of a question that came to me recently. So I'm going to spring it on y'all. Sorry. Um, <laughs> what do you wish people would talk about more with podcast editing that isn't usually talked about? And I'll go first while you're all are thinking. I want, people, <laughs> I want people to talk more about doll comparisons. There's very real silos with Adobe Audition and GarageBand and Hindenburg and, and blah, blah, blah. And I want, I want more of the comparisons between them because I feel like people accidentally get used to a certain doll when there might be one that would be better for them in their style. I would have to say I like that, but I also think that's the same with pretty much everything in podcasting, mm -hmm. like not yeah. just the DAWs, like the hosting platforms and just like everything. When you go to do anything in podcasting, they're like, oh, yeah, you need a microphone, you need headphones, you need this, you need that. And there's like no comparison charts. There's like nothing out there to help guide you. So you're just like, okay, um where do I go? <laughs> what do I do? And, you know, like there are a couple of us podcast managers out there and, you know, like we try to do the best that we can, but you know, there's just so much out there and that anyone can do to help. And, you know, like we're going to go back to community, but the community is so important to help mm -hmm. people get through all of it. And, you know, just, to help guide you through all of those things and picking out which DAW you like the best. Mm -hmm. so. Mary? Susie, Susie, you look I'll like go, you're thinking. I'll, 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 I'll let Mary go next because I'm like, I'm there are words these half that. thoughts and nothing. Sure. <laughs> Mary? I don't know. It, it, it's the part about what not every, uh, what did you say? Uh, what what everybody you like doesn't mm -hmm. talk about, that part. Mm -hmm. You know, then it comes down to, well, it depends on what you mean by everybody because some editors aren't really mm -hmm. into the industry. 
you know, mm-hmm. they just edit their own show or they just might edit one or two other shows for their friends or a client. And then that's it. Yeah. They don't really sink their teeth into the editing space. But mm-hmm. there's a whole, I think there's a whole community that people just don't see and they don't understand is there for them. Mm-hmm. So for us to be speaking on it like this yes. is a way to show there is community. You don't have to do it alone mm-hmm. and that we are here to help, you know, like, so that's one of the reasons why I started my own business is because, yeah, someone can go down the rabbit hole of Google and figure out what is the best mic? What is this? But I kind of like doing that research and that stuff. So I've created like a program to help people launch their podcasts. And I love figuring out, okay, what is the latest and greatest? And then I'll update my program for it so that I can help someone create a show. And if they want to edit their own show, I can teach them how to do that as well. So it's knowing that you are not alone, that there Mm -hmm. are groups out there to, you know, and if you don't want to be in groups, there Mm -hmm. are people that you can contact that you can, that can help you one-on-one as well. That's a good point. When people start podcasting, they're not aware of the avalanche of people yeah. and communities and resources, but they they find the equipment quick because you can Google that, but they don't necessarily find the groups or the or the the people that can help them. Yeah, really good point. Susie? Yeah, so I've got lots of half-formed thoughts, really, but things like... Um, I think you mentioned about the equipment that's that's fine but it was a long while after I started podcasting that I understood why mics were different and I think it was only by attending a conference and hearing people explain about how mics pick up sound and and that was actually really recently um so I think uh, going back to the community thing I think reading what other people have written and asked about is actually really eye-opening because Mm -hmm. again you don't know what you don't know so it's quite hard to find information out you can find out yes what mic do I use or whatever that mic might not be best for your voice but you might not have realized that because you don't know enough about sound Mm -hmm. design or whatever Um, so I think just talking about what we do talking about how we handle each of our shows and the fact that everyone has got such different shows as well so I've, I've met people who do audio, um, audio dramas and that's totally different. That's like building up layer on layer of sound <laughs> to create a universe of, you know, of, of um, just a, a, a real experience for their show. It's streets or years ahead of, <laughs> of my show and yet my show can be quite immersive too, but we're handling it in different ways. Mm-hmm. And... I didn't really understand all of that until I started talking to other podcasters and talking about what their methods were. And the fact that podcasters want to talk about what they do is just amazing. It's wonderful. They really, that's one of the wonderful things about the podcasting community. No matter what topic you talk about, people want to share um, and want to share their experience to help you along. They're not just sharing because they want to talk at you because as podcasters, mainly that's what we do, of course, is just talk at people. Um, (laughs) But yeah, that whole sharing and listening and finding out, I mean, there's just so much. I'm interested in what you say about comparing the doors, because I think a lot of us probably move through different of these uh, digital audio workspaces. You know, Mm -hmm. we we start off with whatever comes to us first, but for Mm -hmm. whatever reason, we'll move on. And I'm now on my third, and I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm really quite happy with that so it's really interesting hearing um hearing your you know reading your articles about you know comparing them because i hadn't i hadn't tried all of them so that was uh, a bit eye-opening as well to think that what i was now settled with how people could look at that and see differences in that and and Mm -hmm. what what would suit different shows differently so i think you know talking about all of those different procedures and processes is really, really um, helpful. Yeah. Is there, is there a podcast editing space? Because I'm thinking about, I'm like, there are lots of podcast editing communities, not sorry, podcast community, podcasting communities, whether they be from the podcast hosts themselves, or they're uh, like Facebook groups for podcasts. And I know that obviously there's 
a few podcast editing groups also, but is there really a space where people say I'm like my community is podcast editors? Is that a, is that a thing? It's an industry. <laughs> it is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So yeah, do you mean industry equals space? I'm not sure. I'm not entirely sure. Like if somebody were to like, if they started their podcast and they liked the editing aspect of it and they wanted to dive more into it, would it be easy for them to find others that are doing that? Like Is others that are finding, others that are doing podcast editing? Mm-hmm. Well, there's the podcast editors club, mm -hmm. but other than that, I mean, no. there, are, there are various Facebook groups, but outside of Facebook, I don't know yeah. how you would find others other than by local, you know, by, sorry, by yeah. um, just speaking to others. Yeah. And I'm thinking of what, like the Dawes have their own groups on Facebook too. There's, I'm in a, mm -hmm. for some reason, a Reaper one. I'm in an audition one. I'm in a Hindenburg one. I like reading what people are doing in these different Dawes, even if I don't use them. But those aren't just podcasters. There's people using the audio for different things in there. So yeah. that's kind of a mixed space. So I'm just kind of curious, other than uh, the, the women specific podcast editor group, the, Blech. the women specific podcast editing groups and podcast editors club are those the main spaces and i'm not i'm not even sure it matters do we need to have specific spaces for podcast editors or well i think there will be and, questions that are the problem with some of the bigger groups that are just for podcasting is if you yeah. ask a question about editing, mm. you'll get some help, but you'll also get all those people that say, huh, I don't edit. Why are you editing? Why are you wasting time doing that? And then that just muddies yeah. the water for you just have a question that you want to get an answer to or something. So I think yeah. it's really valuable having those uh, defined spaces where you know that you could ask an editing question. Mm -hmm. And at least, you know, people might tell you the pros and cons of what it is you're trying to do, but they're not just going to say, why are you even editing? Um, and you don't have to have those conversations. True, true, true. Yeah, that is definitely true. I've seen that on multiple uh, Facebook groups. Yeah. And that probably works for some people, but not really the space I want to be in right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wow, we're almost out of time. Okay, I'm going to do a quick wrap up and then we can go around and tell people where they can find your projects or websites or what have you. So hang tight for just a second. Um, so viewers, listeners, wherever you're consuming this, thank you so much for listening to our panel today. Uh, this will be available, if you're listening now, this will be, the real replays will be available. The video one is available now, which you're probably already watching. That was silly. The podcast will be available a week after the event, so week after April 13th, that will come out on Geopets Podcasting. The event is absolutely free, as are the other two that are happening in April, all on Tuesdays on the 20th and 27th, but we also accept donations because we run on coffee. So if you would like to give funds to our online tip jar, which would in turn come to me, it would be buymeacoffee.com forward slash geopats. Um, our new logo, which is right above Mary. Why am I trying to point again? This is just disaster waiting to happen. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. <laughs> just came out last week. My wonderful friend Ronald Paredes did all of the new logos for Geopets Podcasting, our Geopets Podcast Network. And I'm super excited about those and to show them off digitally during the panels this month. Mm -mm 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 -mm. That is it. Thank you to all of our panelists. But before we say thank you, can we go around and tell people where they can find you? We'll have information in the show notes too, but some people don't dig into show notes. So I like to do it audibly. So Mary, can you start us off? <laughs> the pointing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can find me on my website, organizedsound.ca, CA for Canada. And I am also pretty active on Instagram. You can find me at Organized Sound Productions. Susie? Um, yeah, you can find my show, uh, links to my show and photographs and blogs and things to do with my show. If you like wild birds, 
then do listen and you can find it all at casualbirder.com. Casey. Awesome. You can find me at caseybroda.com. I'm also active on Clubhouse, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, all of the social media sites. Uh, I pop in there every so often. So, and all at Casey Broda. Yeah. Yes. No, almost. This is a nightmare. I got to practice this more. <laughs> Here's all my info. <laughs> and I'm also just Steph Fuccio on all of the socials. So that's, that's another way to get in contact. So thank you. Thank you all lovely panelists for coming on. Hang tight for one second while we go offline. Thank you for everybody who is watching now or later in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we'll have two more panels on the 20th and 27th of April, and I hope to see you there. Bye. Bye. Bye.